we went out into the funding community. We had a new story of Gulf Day. Not the brink, blinking red light on everybody's map about what was wrong with the world, but instead a new story about people who had found their way to Houston with nothing more in their hearts and minds than a chance to work for a better life, not even for themselves, but for their children. People willing to give up everything, travel 6,000 miles, and we like to say whether you had to cross the tracks, the river, or the ocean to get to there, we'll work with you. So there are all kinds of journeys from one part of the world to another to try to realize a better life, and that's what we found in Gulf. And we found people who spoke multiple languages, people who were educated, people who were not educated, and we prepared ourselves for the hard questions that would come because, you see, the whole world's been trained to look at our low-income neighborhoods that way. So when we went out to talk to funders, we got what we knew would be the hard questions. Yeah, but really, isn't it just the worst price on earth for crime? And Yeah, but really, and then the big one was, do you serve undocumented residents? So let me tell you, if you're worrying about that question, here's the answer. Absolutely. We absolutely, every single day, in every single place, in every single center, because you can't hire 12 million people. We serve <laughs> undocumented residents. We are all served by them. And we're fortunate that that's the case, that people all over the world still trust this country with their dreams, still believe there's a possible future here, one different than the world in which they were born. And they come here with that in their hearts. And yes, and I'll tell you, blue state, red state, I just want to say, you have to make commitments to the work you do, you know, well beyond what any funder is willing to make to you. So when we went into Gulfton, and I made this commitment that we were going to be a part of that new Gulfton story. When we went there saying, you've asked us to come to build a center, and first we want to build the community with you, and then we'll put a roof over it, we went there knowing that one way or another, before it was over, we were going to be standing there, maybe with promise, maybe not, maybe with this funder, maybe not, but we had to sustain our commitment well beyond any program or any activity. And as leaders, you've all had to make those commitments. You know you've stood in neighborhoods saying, I'll be here until this transformation occurs. And the funders are not saying, yes, I know it'll take seven to 10 years, we'll be right there with you. <laughs> you know, Because <laughs> they're not all like Aramark. Um, so I remember when I was going into this one big foundation, it was right, right after we had this brand new story, and we had our voices report, and it captured the aspirations of the community. And we had a map of the strengths, we had a map of the leaders, we, we could show how people were connected and how they were already working together. And I stood on the threshold about to go in with my brand new story, all excited, and I thought, hang on, I hope this works, you know? Because, because it was the first time I was gonna say to a funder, it's not about what's broken, it's really about what's right. It's not about health, it's about investment. It's about this neighborhood as our future and about uh, turning it around and turning it into something that would sustain Houston going forward. So I got in there and he said, when I finished my little talk and he looked at me and there were tears in his eyes and he said, I've been waiting for one like this. Because all of us need that story and everyone wants to be a part of the story, not about what's broken, but what's right. And people do will want to invest in that and they want to build with you on that. And so I, I say we raised $25 million in the middle of the worst national conversation on immigration in the middle of a struggling economy to build something, a five building, four acre site in the heart of Houston's most diverse immigrant and refugee neighborhood. And it's been wonderful. And I have a board member for it that says, you know, Angela, y'all get people to write checks for things they wouldn't vote for in a million years. <laughs> you know, and that is, that is absolutely true. Now, Absolutely, because in the state of Texas, you know, people don't like government money. They don't, they're real suspicious of it, and they don't like, and you know, and our governor right in the middle of all this was thinking about seceding, and you know, <laughs> I just want to apologize for that. <laughs> we don't all feel that way. We, we really want to be with the rest of y'all. We really do. Um, uh, so, so, but it's about commitment. Because you really, you gotta say, we're here to do this work because we believe in the people. The people aren't the problem, they're the solution.
blessing. They represent the opportunity. And when we stand beside them, we're not behind them pushing them, we're not in front of them telling them where to go, but beside them, all kinds of change is possible. Now, we're proud of what we've done, but I tell everybody, we don't want to be anybody's model. Because we've all been modeled to death. Because every time one of us does something right, well, now it's a model. That means one of us feels good and the rest of us feels like an Academy Award, sitting there thinking, how come we're not the model? <laughs> or the other thing we think is, how in the world, why'd she wear that dress? <laughs> but, so, as leaders, it's not about...